Well, we just had our annual egg drop competition, or since I teach astronomy, what I call the Martian lander competition. And I thought I'd share a little bit um, about how we do it in my class. I've done this, this is the 24th year uh, that I've done this. I've seen it done thousands of times. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about the science and uh, some of the rules that we have in my class to make it a little more challenging. As far as the science goes, I often think of things first in terms of energy. Uh, we go up on the balcony at my school and, and there is a certain amount of potential energy. They all have to drop uh, from the same height. And um, since they weigh a different amount, there's a slightly different uh, potential energy for them. But uh, at least the height part is the same for all. That potential energy is going to become kinetic energy. And I have three different sets of rules depending on the year. Some years I allow unlimited parachute, which is easiest. Uh, some years, like this year, I allow a limited parachute. It has to fit, uh, for example, this year in a 12 by 12 inch square. Or uh, some years, no parachute is allowed, uh, which is fun as well. Um, because that potential energy is going to become, of course, kinetic energy. Here's the formula for linear kinetic energy, which depends on the mass, but it depends even more on the velocity. You see that velocity squared means a little change in velocity is a big change in the amount of energy. And of course that's important because something has to happen to that energy. Uh, that kinetic energy, when it hits the ground, that energy is going to go towards doing work or in other words crumpling up uh, your uh, craft. So you want to have the least amount of energy possible. You want the work actually being done on air instead, pushing the air out of the way uh, or in other words slowing it down. So the number one thing I look for in the egg drop competition, if I'm picking whether one's going to survive, are they slowing it down? And of course the easiest way to slow it down, I guess, uh, is with a parachute. Uh, but in years when they aren't allowed to use a parachute, well then they have to be more creative. I've seen other ways as well. I call, um, I call this one the, uh, the helicopter. Uh, this usually doesn't win my year because in my class uh, we do it by weight. I mean, in I don't know, elementary school or middle school, um, you know, kids get to use whatever materials they want and, and it can weigh as much. But we do it all by weight and it's the lightest craft to survive. The lightest one to protect the egg wins. And so these are kind of on the heavy side. I've had this done before, uh, what I call the, uh, the maple seed and, uh, Here's one I just found online. I haven't seen anybody make this in my class, but uh, I'm going to call this one the, uh, the Da Vinci after Leonardo's famous sketch. Uh, I'd like to see that one in action. That's pretty cool. Uh, but really what you're trying to do with any parachute or any design like that, uh, you're trying to reach what we call terminal velocity as quickly as possible. You want to reach the smallest, the lowest uh, terminal velocity. Um, which is basically catching, you know, increasing the air resistance as quickly as possible so that it matches gravity and the rest of the way down, those two forces, the weight of it down and, and the air resistance upward are balanced and it travels at a constant uh, rate, which we call terminal velocity. So that's really the key to lowering that kinetic energy is to getting the velocity, the terminal velocity as low as possible. So that's one way to look at these. Um, what about when it hits? Well, I would refer to, to this equation. Now, the impulse momentum equation is really just Newton's second law, uh, F equals MA, sort of in disguise. If you take that delta T and divide it under the other side under the delta V, of course, delta V over delta T is acceleration. So you just end up with F equals MA. But regardless, um, impulse momentum, let's say that it's a year where the kids are not allowed to use a parachute at all. That means the right-hand side of the equation change in momentum is, is roughly uh, the same for everybody uh, because they're all going to come to a stop. They're all going to be falling at you know roughly the same speed as they hit uh, because they're not allowed to slow it down much. Let's just take that as an easy case. In that case, it all depends on the left side of the equation, which is called impulse. It's how we measure uh, rockets, for example, how much thrust they have for how long of a time period. But in this case, it's really a, a measure of how much cushion uh, your, your craft has. Um, and basically, the, the key idea is to increase the time of impact, which decreases the force on the egg. It's the same idea behind airbags. You're going to come to a stop one way or the other. You can stop quickly by hitting a windshield. Uh, but what you want to do instead is increase that time uh, that your body's going to slow down. 
and that decreases the force uh, on your body. So seat belts and airbags and so forth are made for that reason. So the next thing I look at, I look at a good parachute and things like that. And the next thing I look at, uh, does it have kind of a crumple zone? I like this design quite a bit, um, especially with a small parachute to make sure that it hits exactly on that cone there and it crumples up and the egg is safe. Um, we had uh, one of these this year, what I call the web. Um, certainly it's going to be safe. It's going to weigh quite a bit. It's probably not going to win in my class, but um, um, you have a huge, huge crumple zone, so uh, it's going to be fine. Um, I like these quite a bit. I had a lot of kids make these. Uh, the Apollo lander, I like to call them. Again, in any direction, you have a pretty good size crumple zone. They usually work pretty well. And uh, I don't often have kids make this, but I have had it made before with what I call the double vortex. So uh, that's a really cool one. Again, it's a little on the heavy side for my class to actually win. Um, suspended animation. Here's one where they suspend the egg with some rubber bands. Um, look at that. And you can see the motion of the egg. I'm sorry I had this turned this way. But um, anyway, you see the motion of the egg. I really don't like those because too often um, there's too much uh, elasticity with the rubber bands and the egg ends up hitting the ground and breaking. Uh, we'll get back to that actually in just a second. First, the, the final thing that I look at is the part of the ship that hits the ground, the surface area. How much pressure is going to be on the egg? And uh, as you see here from the formula, what you're trying to do is make the greatest area of impact possible because that's sort of spreading that force out over a greater area, which means less pressure. All right. It's the difference between uh, stepping on something with uh, with tennis shoes on and stepping on something with high heels on. Okay, uh, if you were in high heels, all of that weight is on that high heel. That would, you know, put a lot of pressure at that point. Um, versus if I'm wearing tennis shoes, of course, then I, I step on something and it's less likely to break, even though I might, you know, weigh more. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just take a look here at some ways. Um, I really don't like these designs at all. I mean, I just think there's a total lack of creativity in what I call the box. Ah, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but they always weigh a lot and, you know, uh, but they do sometimes work, uh, the box. Um, I don't even allow sponges anymore. It's just kind of too easy. Uh, but um, as you can see here, you can not only drop it. In this case, the kids actually just threw it off our balcony and stuff like that. And you just couldn't break it. So... That's an easy way to go. And then here's one of those suspension ones that I really don't uh, care for much. I've seen it work, but um, I don't like them too much uh, for that reason. They, they usually are too too stretched out. And here's one I found online that was just kind of comical. So uh, that's it. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit of the physics of uh, egg drops. So uh, good luck with your competition.